Okay, well, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks so much. I, I do truly appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> when it when it comes to support, resistance, and trend in the market, and how that affects my decision making in in trading, is um, I can tell you honestly, it's it's almost everything to me. Support, resistance, and trend, and I get lots of comments on this and instead of just doing you know my same old thing of going along and drawing lines I, I want to start this out just a little bit differently today when talking about support resistance and trend and the reasons why this changed my life and 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 I'm, I don't say that lightly guys um, I struggled in my trading for a long time I mean, I, I, I like to say I stunk up the market. I was a great market contributor. I lost a lot of money um, over, over time. And luckily my business was doing well in construction, but my purpose of becoming a trader was to get away from a construction and, and that wasn't happening. And I don't know if any of you feel this way, but I so much wanted um, trading to to be my business, my lifestyle, um, that I didn't want to give up, but I came so close to it um, that I was I was literally cleaning stuff up off my computer because I was done. And as I started cleaning up charts, I started noticing that there were trends all around me. How, how many of you have ever looked back at a chart? Whatever that chart might be. We were just looking at McDonald's here earlier. You look back at a chart and you had looked at the chart earlier. Does anybody ask that question of yourself? Why am I not in any of these trending charts? Roger, that honestly, that can be a good sign uh, for you because what you're what you're going through is you're showing that. Um, tenacity that I'm going to stick to it um, but now we've got to get you past that that place that that changes things in your life changes things in your trading now I can't tell you support resistance and trend will be as important to you as it is to me but I can tell you to me when I really started looking at it and opened up my eyes. It, it's one of the most basic things of trading, support, resistance, and trend. And it was, to, to me, it was the thing that I ignored the most. I was more into writing the perfect scan or having the perfect grouping of indicators that told me when to trade rather than me making the decision. I wanted, I wanted the computer, I wanted the indicators, I wanted the scan to tell me when it was time to trade. Now, I, I know a lot of people will say, well, that's not, that's not how I use it. But let's be honest, guys. That's how most people use indicators, and that's how most people use scans. Because what we're really trying to do is we're really trying to lay off the blame to something else. Right? We're trying to push our failure in trading as well. This system doesn't work and these indicators don't work and it, the whole thing is rigged, it's fixed, okay? But when you start going through charts and going around the market, you'll see there's trends everywhere and it doesn't have to be a volatile trend. 
it doesn't have to be a trend that's showing these big whips and gaps. I mean, look at McDonald's. It doesn't have to be these wild and crazy swings. In fact, I will tell you that I have much more success in my trading staying away from the high flyers of the market. Okay, I know everyone's interested in, in Apple and Microsoft and all of these really expensive high flyers, NVIDIA, and I don't have any interest in it. Maybe some credit spread trades, but I really don't have any interest in it. Because they're so incredibly volatile, they whip such big points in a day, I don't want to play there. I want to find charts that are holding simple, consistent trends with relatively concise price action. Price action that's readable, that's understandable. And when I finally shook off all of the garbage that I had piled on, I, I've described it as you're going down this path, your journey into trading, and as you're going along, you, you stop and you learn about a different strategy. And and um, I liken that, you know, I love to hike, so um, I, you reach down and you pick up this bag of information and you put it around your neck and you keep moving down the path. And then, well, it, it needs something else and you find something else and you pick up another bag and you put it around your neck. And you keep going down that path and over the course of years, you gain all of this knowledge and you're loading yourself up with more and more and more weight. And that's analysis paralysis. Okay, because you pile on so much weight hanging those bags around your neck, you can no longer move. Okay, all that knowledge and it's not improving your trading. Show of hands, how many of you have been frustrated with how much you've learned, how much you know about the market now? but it's not improving your trading. It's frustrating, right? Very, very frustrating. But what I realized when I was cleaning up those charts is that if I got out of my own head, if I just looked at support, resistance, and trend, okay, I could find trends everywhere and it doesn't matter if it's trends up or trends down. It doesn't matter. I don't, and this is something that took me a while to get over. I don't care which way the market moves. I know most of the market despises or just dreads the idea of a selling market. I don't care. The only thing required for me to make money, we've got an extremely bullish market right right now I made seven thousand dollars so far this year short the market okay. I don't care which way the market goes I just want it to move okay because I'm focused on support resistance and trend Now there's some key aspects in here that are extremely important. When I was running scans and using indicators and things like that, what I was doing was chasing the big white candles. Okay, That big popping candle that I would see to get me into the trade. What I learned over time that this first cross up here doesn't mean really anything. In fact, it's not for me. This is when the institutions are showing their hand that they may start to support this stock. That's all it is. Because we have all experienced that situation, guys, right? Where we get that pop back up and it reverses and comes right back down. Okay. So the first thing that I had to learn before a trend can be established, we must create 
a higher low. And it can either be with a pullback or it can be with a consolidation. Because without that higher low, we have no trend. So when it comes to trend, this stuff down here, I don't care about. I'm not interested in it. I don't want to be in it. That's where massive volatility is, and that's where the highest risk trades are. I don't want that. Okay. So what I learned over time, and, th and, and I want you guys to understand that this didn't happen in 10 minutes. You know, I had the initial aha moment. Now, wait a minute. There's trends everywhere. Why am I not in any of them? I started eliminating indicators that was conflicting and not create, not giving me what I really wanted to see. And, and to the point where I came to a chart like this, where there's no indicators on price, zero. And it's no joke, guys. When I started following a couple rules, and that is there's no trend until a higher low has been placed and buyers step up, okay? And I traded price, not indicators, not scans. I traded price. That's when my trading changed. That's when I started making money. I got very, very simple in my trading. I can tell you without question, you guys know that I teach the 3-8 trap. The 3-8 trap is nothing more than a reflection of support, resistance, and trend. That's all it is. It's not a method for me. It's not a method for me to scan for charts. It has nothing to do with whether it's a high three or a low three, has nothing to do with that. It doesn't even have to be the three and the eight to do it. What it is, is a tool to show me that a trend has changed, that moment and momentum is staying with the new trend. That's all it is. And I can tell you without question, because for years, I didn't use a single indicator on my charts. And I successfully traded and turned my trading around with support, resistance, and trend. This information to me is so valuable that if you take everything away from me, I can trade charts effectively with support, resistance, and trend. Okay. So let's talk about, we talked about trend here just a little bit. Let's talk about support. And let's talk about resistance. Questions that come up often for me is, Okay, um, how far back do you look? Well, as far as I need to. Take a look at the SPY, for example, right now. SPY. We still have not been able to break out of the 2021-2022 highs. Is that impacting current price? Yes, absolutely. So you've got to go back as far as it takes to find those support and resistance levels in a chart. On short-term moves, when we're coming up out of bottoms like McDonald's, we don't have to go very far back. Anybody see why the resistance right here, why we rested right here? See it? Can anyone not see that? This price action here created that resting period in the market. It's, 
it's no no trick you see i developed a firm belief with studying charts and i studied oh guys i didn't do this like i said started to say i didn't do this in 10 minutes i would go back and find trending charts push the chart all the way back to where the trend had started and i would go one day at a time i would be looking for the signal where 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 does the trend begin where's the highest odds trade what gives me clues that this might fail and i would do that and, I, and i'm a little bit ashamed to admit this i was so obsessed on it i would spend nearly 24 hour sessions just studying how the pattern here on the bottom developed how the pattern here in the top developed so I could see it. So I could see it just when I clicked the chart up. Oh, I see it. I've said for the last couple of days, um, Apple, Apple is running into a potential short. You guys see it? If you can't see it, you've got to study it. Apple broke support. It now becomes resistance. Any rally back to that resistance creates a problem for Apple. So these levels of support and resistance are important to pay attention to because they give you clues. It doesn't, it doesn't put a flashing, wouldn't it be nice if, you know, there was a flashing arrow up here um, that just blinked on and off all day long. Cell signal, cell signal, cell signal, cell signal, cell signal. But that's not the way the market works. It's, it's never going to be that simple. And we can't rely on a scan. We can't rely on a strategy. We can't rely on candlesticks. We cannot rely on, um, you know, any of those normal things that we try to, to, to take away the responsibility for us to make the decision on the trade. We try to use all of those crutches to take away our responsibility of making the decision on the trade because then it's always somebody else's fault, some, something else's fault. It's not my fault. Support, and even if you don't want to short Apple, okay, even if you disagree, Apple's not a short, you cannot deny that resistance in the chart. Apple is trying to give us clues. Are you willing to look at them? So support resistance and trend is really telling us a story. And every day that story is being written in a chart, okay? Is this going to be bullish? Is this going to be bearish? Where's the trade going to be? How is that going to complete? What does it look like when it's over? So my success in trading has been the study of price action and a high focus on support, resistance, and trend. Okay, I'm always looking for those potential places. I had someone, can't remember what the trade was now. Um, uh, TSCO. I mentioned Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is setting up a beautiful 3.8 trap long. Okay. Now here's the difference, guys. Because I use support resistance and trend, do you guys, first off, I'm looking for, I'm not looking for the white candle. You notice that here? 
I'm looking for the development of the pattern before the candle appears. Ninety-nine point nine percent of everybody in the market is looking or having a scan trying to show them when the candle pops. And that's one way where people are using the three trap wrong. I want to find the pattern developing. Okay? And then I want to plan a trade where I want to enter that trade if it pops. Then I take that next step. And that next step is how much risk is there on that trade? Where's my stop loss? And how much potential upside is there in the chart? Now, let me ask you guys this. If you look across here and you see that huge resistance in tractor supply, and even though this is a beautiful potential 3A trap long, if you enter this here, and your stop loss is here, and you have a huge resistance level up here, is this trade even worth risking your money on? Let me say that a different way. Could I find a better trade? Okay, Thomas, yes. Um, yes, resistance areas, support areas are really good place, places to hedge. Um, to lay off risk on trades. I do a lot of that. Okay. So when I'm just looking and I'm trying to see the trade occur before it actually happens, and, and by the way, this is really, really important on support, resistance, and trend. Very, very important. Okay. You should be seeing your trade signals very near trend, very near support levels. If your trade signal occurs a long ways away from the trend, it has about a 50% chance of failing. So what I'm talking about is that chart where that stock has moved up and we extend and extend and we pull back a couple of days and it pops a buy signal. Fifty percent of those trades will fail and come back to the trend. Okay, so we need to see the price acting diligently. It's respecting support. It's respecting resistance. It's respecting trend. Okay, if we're really separated away from the trend, chances are we're going to find a way to come back to it. As a matter of fact, I would say IWM is a pretty good example of that right now. We had a trend that we had started, we extended in this trend, and we extended on in this trend. We got parabolic in the move, and look what's occurred. Coming back. We've created our first lower high in IWM with a head and shoulders topping pattern. Coming back to this trend, the big trend. Now the question is, will this hold? That question is yet to be answered. Will it hold? All right. By the way, downtrends. The same thing is true when an uptrend happens, the pullback holds a higher low, that starts an uptrend. This starts a downtrend. 
and it's always the same guys it can't it, it literally is never different from that except maybe double tops and double bottoms it's always the same okay so when we're looking at support resistance and trend we need to look at the levels in the chart that provide us that information all support levels will normally have price support we resisted right here for a period of time on res that resistance and consolidated right here because of this price action months ahead And I know for me, and I'm not saying this is the same for everyone, but I know for me and my study, and, and I'm, I'm one of those guys that, that gets obsessed about an idea, thought process. When this really became evident to me that I was missing everything in the market, because what I was trying to do is I was trying to pick bottoms and trying to pick tops. How many of you guys have... have uh, recognize that that picking bottoms and picking top stuff is is pretty bad business and and how many of you would also agree that if you don't get the best entry on the bottom or the top well then you just stop looking at it because you know, I missed the trade right I'm here to tell you that when we do shift, you have better trades, lower risk trades by waiting. So for example, in this short, can you guys see, if you shorted IWM here, your stop loss is up here. That's far lower risk than trying to take a short on the top. Waiting for the stock to put in a consolidating or a little pullback pattern, I can set price alerts and get into trades with much less risk by waiting for the trade. And then I can plan those trades and determine if that trade is even worthy of my money. Certainly it can still win. If I see a buy signal like we saw over here on or, or could be setting up here on tractor supply this is a good setup okay but when i evaluate that to my stop and the big resistance level in that chart that now goes back to 2022 and i assess i only need a few winning trades i don't need every trade right I can probably find a trade that gives me better upside opportunity without so much. The risk on this is good, okay? But the resistance here is not. And this is a thing that messes up people, messed me up forever. Because I would get disappointed. I want this trade, I want it right now. But let me show you something. If this trade follows through like we suggest, that it comes up here and then pulls back to here, you guys think this will be a better trade than this was? Look at the potential upside that could occur if it breaks above that. So remember, once a trend begins, you don't have to catch every entry. Just wait for the next one. You can literally lay out and say, hmm, you know, it's a great setup. I like it. I really do. And this, this is honest, guys. I really think that's a good potential setup coming. But is it really worth my money? 
because remember, let's how many how many trades do you need every week, guys? If you were pickier about the trades that you take, how many how many winning trades do you really need? I don't need that many trades. Okay? I don't need tons of winning trades. In fact, I would say the race for frequency of trade, the quantity of trade is messing people up because they're not looking for the quality trade. I think this is a great setup. But I also think I can find better. But I want to make a mental note of this. Or put, a, put this on a list. Because if this does perform, I want the trade up here. And I want to be watching for it when that occurs. Does that make sense, guys? Put priorities on the trades that you take based on support, resistance, and trend. Take those trades. And there's just no point in me, for me. I, 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 it took me a long time to figure this out, but there was just, there's just no point for me to take a trade that can't produce at least double what I risk on the position. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> go ahead. It, you can nitpick and nitpick and nitpick, and uh, where you see support and resistance, that's fine. Um, remember, these should be big fat lines. It's not a precision tight line. Okay, if you look at where I drew this line, I what I'm looking at is how many touches. I get to this area okay I get lots of touches if if you want that to be a different place and you see it as there fine but I see a lot of evidence here where this at level it served as support here it served as resistance here 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 and here served as support over here that is an important level in the chart. No, it's okay. It's okay. Now, and please, I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle what you think is resistance either. All right? If you see the chart a different way, fine, then study the chart that way and see if that works. Okay. And it may well be a little bit higher. I don't know. But that doesn't change the fact that I have a big resistance above me and I would prefer to trade the trade up here. Does that make sense? So quantify those trades because if we if we focus a little bit more on quality in the support resistance and trend rather than just chasing any trade that's popping okay we're gonna do better in those trades yeah trends are never going to be perfection Okay, we'll, we'll drop through, here's a wick that dropped through, okay. What I'm concerned about is how many touches do I get to that trend. Okay. The more touches I get to a trend, the more strength. I see in the trend we can blow through here let me 
let me do an exact parallel line. Let me push this up here. How many of you would say the upside channel of this trend is somewhere in here? It's not pushing it all the way up to here. This was an extreme move that went too far and then we corrected it real quickly. The trend is somewhere in here. On that upside move. Does that make sense? We get emotional in the market and we do it all the time. We spike out, we spike down, and then we get the quick reversal. Okay. Look for the number of touches. And then when we see these areas where we might flatten out, do you guys also see the possibility that this doesn't break out of here at all? That this could be range bound in here for a period of time, stuck, just like we stuck over here. Never forget the sideways potential of a market. Markets move in three ways. They move up, they move down, they move sideways. And each one of those has about a 33%, 33.3% chance of occurring. What we tend to do as traders is we only evaluate the up and the down. We never evaluate the chance that we could be range bound. We need to. Okay. Yeah, the pop out of the box. Well, let's look at, I think McDonald's was a pretty good example of the pop out of the box. Well, yeah, in places here. Where we get these nice tight consolidations in the move. Okay. That is resistance, but it's also within the current trend. A pop out of the box that occurs beyond this trend is not a trade. If this consolidated all the way over here, it's no longer in a trend. Okay, We're trading this trend, correct? So we're looking for that next entry that matches the trend. The upside. And, and guys, I, I can tell you this from lots and lots of experience. I can tell you this from over 20 years of trading the trap okay if you follow stringent rules and you only buy stocks that are at or near price support and trend that give you at least two for one profit to risk on the trade your win-loss ratio will run about 70% I know that for a fact because that's what my win-loss ratio runs. And it has consistently for years because that's all I do. Is I utilize support, resistance, and trend to improve my trading. I'm going to show you um, also how it can be used for hedging. I had a long-term trade that got called away and by the way I didn't I didn't count the profits in AT&T for my profits so far this year I don't know why I didn't do that but I didn't um, I was in a longer term trade here on AT&T okay we were approaching this 17 area in the chart we were pushing up here so I sold the 17 strike calls and we pulled back and consolidated and we had this last surge up here boom got pushed into um, up above there and I got called away now what call away means is someone I sold someone the right to buy the stock from me at 17 they paid me for that right to buy the stock from me at 17 I got called away they took my stock 
So, I still made money on the stock, right? Because I sold it at 17 and somebody paid me to buy it at 17. Meaning, I made more money because I sold that strike. And now look what's happening to AT&T. Makes you feel like a genius sometimes when you use big resistance areas and big support areas to manage a trade in a position. So somebody took this away from me at $17 a share and now it's falling. Cool. I could wait. If I want to get back into a trade here on AT&T, give me a proper pattern, I can wait to get back into that trade. Okay. So when you look at these charts and you see big areas, um, we laid out a trade today, um, an Apple trade. I don't know if anybody was interested in it or not, but we laid one out just by utilizing support, resistance, and trend. We put on this trade. This was the layout. I don't know if anybody put it on. Let me rephrase that. I don't know if anybody put the trade on. Okay. We sell a short strike here. We buy a long strike here. This is our stop loss. So we're utilizing the resistance of the chart up here against its, itself. We see a failure pattern starting to occur here. And I have a stop loss back up here. If we cross above this resistance, if I'm wrong, I'll get out of that trade. I'm wrong on the position. Okay. If this trade works as resistance tells me and price pattern tells me, the high probability is Apple will either pull back or it will, at a minimum, consolidate in this area of chart. Because notice we've got support underneath it here. So it could be range bound. It's not going to report until 2-1. So I have plenty of time for Theta to pay me on this trade. Okay. So utilizing those big areas of support and resistance in the chart also give me the ability to use an awful lot of spread trades where I can trade a position and never ever really own the stock. I just, I'm just collecting premium trade. Okay, and by the way, that's how I made the biggest money so far this year by using a spread trade on the diamonds index collected my profit here just early this week okay so you can utilize those big areas of support and resistance to give you high probability trades and you don't have to trade them directionally now this is a directional put trade that you can easily trade but the put trade, the directional put trade, requires that you take significant risk on Apple. But I don't have to do that with this trade. I don't have to take a big risk. And time is on my side for those positions. So when you look at a chart and you see these big levels, you can make money around those big levels in charts when a chart breaks a big level or falls through a big level it becomes it, it comes into a trending situation I'll, I'll, here's an example um, this was one of the longest term trades I ever held I think I got to go here yeah there it is it's marked on the trade so on the chart. This is a multi-year resistance. Okay. Notice this is pretty common for this stock. Multi-year resistance. Okay. 
multi-year resistance I went on the stock on the break. 2013 to 2019, how long I held that trade and it never really broke trend. Now look what it's doing. Same thing. You could trade around this at the, these tops and these bottoms and you could have done that for the last several years and successfully traded around this trade and made money. If you understand support, resistance, and trend. So I, I want to get some time for questions here, guys, mm -hmm. on what I'm talking about. And if if um, you have some questions, feel free to ask them. But remember that if you want to improve your trading, work with the market condition. Support, resistance, and trend is giving us that story. And we have to move with that story as much as possible. Now, please keep in mind, I'm no genius trader. I miss trends. I miss things all over the place. That, that's fine. Okay, I don't really care about that. What I care about is at the end of the month, I've made money. Okay, I'm not, I'm not concerned about every trade in the market. I just need a few. And I look for trades that can give me really good return for the money that I have to put at risk. And when I utilize trend, support, and resistance, I improve my odds of a trade. Okay? We use technical analysis to improve the odds of a trade. We can add that technical analysis, support, resistance, and trend, and improve our odds of winning a trade. We can add a little bit of planning to that. Where's my entry? Where's my stop? Where's the upside potential on this trade? And I can improve it even more. And I want to show you guys this because this goes back to the, the day, you know, more than 20 years ago. Um, when um, I made this calculator. And this is exactly the way I planned my trades. I was working full time. I was building houses. I never was home during the time, during the hours that the market was open. I couldn't watch the market ever during the day. So what I did is I utilized support, resistance, and trend. And you can see it right here in my wording. Okay. So what this means is, is I would look for the closing price of the day. The stock was holding into one of my patterns and the closing price of the day was showing me bullish potential here. See this rule? Always go long near support. Support and trend. Always go long near support and trend. So I would take that closing price because I couldn't watch the market during the day. And I would enter my support number. The support number is where stop loss should be. Below it. Okay. Where's my resistance? My resistance is where was the next upside opportunity that that could go to before I run into more resistance. Okay. Now, this here is um, a rule that um, because I couldn't watch the market at all during the day, I used stop limit orders. A stop limit order says I want to buy it at this price, no more than this price. 
that's all a stop limit order is. I would look at the price action of the chart and say, yeah, 25 cents is probably fine. So here's an example, guys. I never got the best price. Never got the best price. Because I would take my closing price and add 25 cents to it. Meaning the stock had to go up before I got entered into the trade. If the stock gapped above this, I didn't want the trade. And then I would calculate to a stop loss that was 25 cents below support. Below support. So it could test support and still bounce off. And that order would tell me this is my entry trigger, and I don't, I don't, I would always round these. I never use like 91 and 16. It would have been like 90 and 15, something like that. But then um, it would tell me that I had a potential of making better than two to one on the trade. And I would set this order usually about 9 o'clock at night, 9, 10, 10 o'clock at night, when I would place my orders, shut off my computer, and I wouldn't see the market till the next day. And utilizing these rules, buy stocks at or near price support, sell stocks at or near price resistance, or short stocks at or near price resistance. Yeah, sometime during the day, if the stock pr proceeded like I expected it to, okay, if the pattern played out, I saw this candle and the stock extended up, market opens, my stop limit orders in the market. If it rallied up 25 cents, my order was triggered, my stop loss was dropped. But I was never there to see it. Guys, I did this for years and built my trading account to where I could go full time. When I tell you that utilizing support, resistance, and trend and being very stringent to the rules produces about a 70% return, it's because all of my stats will show you that. you'll win about 70% of your trades, not 70% return. 70% of your trades will win because you're working with the market. You're moving with the market. You're moving with the trend and you plan the trade to give you enough odds in the position. You only take trades that have stops that are acceptable and those that have enough upside potential. So you don't have to trade the way I trade. You don't have to like the way I trade. You don't have to do any, anything that I, I, I say. But if, if you want your trading to improve, if it's not working for what you're doing right now, I would really encourage you to study support, resistance, and trend. Only trade trades that are moving with the direction of the market. Be very precise and consistent about how you apply your rules. We only take so much risk on a trade. Okay, Make sure it's close to trend. Make sure it's near a support level. Think about it, guys. If I have a trade, if I'm looking at a position that is near a trend, near support, am I improving my odds that those factors will continue to hold the chart? Not that I know that it's going to do it. I, again, I told you, I, about 30% of my trades lose. 
But because I make those factors come together, I win more trades. And the other thing that I want you guys to know is it doesn't matter what time frame you trade. Okay, because this is true every time frame. I made $96,000 last year trading a 333 tick futures, Dow futures chart. I'm So far I'm up this year. And I do exactly the same thing. I already showed you a weekly chart. I do exactly the same thing. Okay. Support, resistance, and trend can change your life. It changed mine. And I'm pretty passionate about it. So I, I'm running out of time here. I need to go um, so that um, John can set up. So guys, ask, ask these questions of me when you get the chance. Uh, trailed the stop loss yes I would move my stop loss only at the appropriate times moving your stop loss is a whole nother subject because when people say trail the stop loss they often trail it too tightly okay no when I trade futures because you don't have because I trade such a fast time frame I don't actually draw the lines okay but here guys um, give me any chart somebody give me a chart any chart I'm gonna go to something where I hopefully don't have any drawings any chart give me one ticker WBA it takes this long for me to see these patterns there's my trend my trend break my higher low potentially coming in here there's support there's support there's resistance this is a bigger resistance in the chart it takes that long the more you practice that the more you'll learn it I don't need the lines there to see it okay I can also tell you that this had an upside trend that it's now broken because we broke this support right here. It's now broken. Now the way you get here guys and people will ask me this question all the time. How did you get so that you can see that stuff that way? And, and my answer is usually go draw 10,000 charts and then come back and ask me that question. It's just practice, guys. It's just practice. All right. I got to go. Y'all take care. Have a great afternoon. I hope you got something out of this. Wish you guys all the best.